Joe Gibbs Racing announces a new Xfinity Series driver for 2025. Travis Mack has left College Racing effective immediately. Where is he headed? And we break down this week's tier list. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. In yesterday's video, if you remember, I talked about Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing having an announcement scheduled for Wednesday at noon. Is it just paint schemes? Is it the third car? Well, it turns out it was just a paint scheme. It was the 17th Fast and All paint scheme for 2025, and honestly, it's a great looking car, uh, so hats off to the designer and the team there. Should look great on track. Getting into today's news, though, we got a new NASCAR Xfinity Series driver announcement, that coming from Joe Gibbs Racing, when they announced that Taylor Gray will officially move up from the Truck Series to the Xfinity Series in 2025, driving that number 54 car uh, for Joe Gibbs Racing. Now, if you've watched this channel, if you've watched the TikTok videos, or even follow me on uh, Twitter, X, whatever you want to refer to it as, you knew that this was going to eventually be announced. It shouldn't really come as a surprise to anybody, but Taylor Gray will make his way up to the Xfinity Series. He has made 12 starts this year for the team. He has two top five finishes, three top 10 finishes. Not terrible, right? Not Carson Quapel numbers, not Connor Zillish numbers, but respectable numbers for the most part. Uh, he leaves or graduates from the Truck Series with 53 current starts under his belt, 56 by the time the season is over. He doesn't have a win yet, but he does have 10 top five finishes, 19 top tens. He's having his best season uh, ever. He's only 19 years old as well. He currently sits P6 in the standings, I believe, uh, in the Truck Series. So overall, maybe not like the most outstanding resume I think anybody has ever seen, but he could be one of those guys like a Harrison Burton who doesn't really ever get the win in the Truck Series and maybe seems like a pretty mediocre driver for the most part, but then the Xfinity car really suits his driving style, where we saw Harrison Burton graduate up to the Xfinity series and knock off four wins in one season. Maybe we see the same happen for Taylor Gray. For Joe Gibbs Racing, though, their 2025 NASCAR Xfinity series lineup is maybe one of the weaker ones we've seen in recent years. And I don't mean that as a slight. I mean, Joga's Racing uh, in their Xfinity series typically rolls out like the juggernaut of the Xfinity series, at least in terms of talent. For next year, we know that they will have Brandon Jones, who will rejoin the team. And Brandon Jones does have four uh, career Xfinity series wins. Um, he's struggled really bad at at uh, Junior Motorsports, but he does bring that Menards and Ream money with him, so that helps out a lot there. They will likely have William Sawalch uh, in one of those cars as well. He and that hearing aid money will make their way over or up to the Xfinity Series after being a force in the Arca Series. I'm still not high on William Sawalch. I know a lot of people are, but what we've seen out of him in the Truck Series has been pretty mid. Now he is young. He's still very young. Um, so there is a possibility that he will mature into it. But currently what we've seen out of him has been okay. Not stellar, not, you know, uh, light the world on fire. He's not coming out flexing like Armstrong, like he was Ty Gibbs when he got into the Xfinity series. He's just been okay. And then they of course will have Taylor Gray and then likely a rotating cast. But Taylor Gray being in that 54 card definitely means that he's, well, not going to go out and win his first race, but he could potentially wreck his teammate, blame them, and then fight Sam Mayer if he wants to really um, try to resemble the guy that used to drive that 54 car in the Xfinity series. But right now, Taylor Gray headed to Xfinity in 2025. College Racing announced on Wednesday that Travis Mack has left the team effective immediately. He was serving as a crew chief for the number 16 car. Of course, that's been a rotating cast of drivers. Nearly won with SVG a few weeks ago at Watkins Glen. Had a pretty good run, a top 10 run, at least at the Roval this past weekend. I wonder where Travis Mack is going to end up. If there was just a hint, if there was just a clue to where... Oh he could end up at yeah he's likely headed to legacy motor club to more than likely take over the number 42 car legacy motor club has been making a lot of changes and they've been making a lot of changes for like the better part of two years now and haven't really found footing at the moment but maybe this is the move that will help them out so if you missed it dave ellens was released from his role as a crew chief in the number 43 car for eric jones uh last week they then moved Ben Bayshore over from the 42 car to the 43 car. Brian Campy, who was hired to be the vice president of competition or director of competition, whatever legacy wants to refer uh, to his position as, they love a VP title over at LMC. Uh, he will serve as the interim crew chief for the 42 car. I would expect Travis Mack to end up in that 42 car uh, atop their pit box for 2025 and the rest and beyond, I guess. I don't know what the contract details will be for him, but... Travis Mack is a interesting case in terms of being a crew chief. He was the crew chief for Junior Motorsports with Michael Annette. And 
he went out there and won a race with Michael Annette. He won that uh, Daytona race uh, to start the season. And honestly, no offense to Michael Annette, but taking Michael Annette to victory lane is like winning a national championship on Heisman in NCAA football 25. It's really hard. So hats off to him for doing that. He then took a crew chiefing job uh, in the Cup Series for uh, Trackhouse becoming the crew chief of Daniel Suarez. Took Daniel Suarez to victory lane for his first ever NASCAR Cup Series. Well, I guess both of their first ever NASCAR Cup Series uh, victories when he um, won at Sonoma back in 2022. Pretty good success there. Trackhouse decided to make a change there. He goes over to College Racing, nearly wins uh, this season with SVG at Watkins Glen. Um, had a really good car at the Chicago Road Course. Had a really good car this past weekend at the Roval as well. He's worked well with uh, Derek Krause, AJ Allmendinger, Ty Dillon, Josh Williams, SVG, a, a whole cast of characters over at uh, College Racing. And now he will move over to Legacy Motor Club. Travis is just uh, one of those guys I feel like is a very smart guy, uh, just needs to like find that right place for him and hasn't done that quite yet. And maybe Legacy will be the perfect landing spot uh, for him going forward. For Legacy, they definitely need to figure out what the heck is going on over there because uh, this is a team that should be running better. There's no reason they should be running as poorly as they are. And I know they're trying to right the ship, right? Like, it's no secret that Jimmy Johnson and uh, Moore Gallagher have been making moves. They want to make changes. They don't want to pay Joe Gibbs Racing uh, the fee to become, you know, uh, one of their alliance teams. And I get that, right? Like, you want to do things on your own, but... Man, if you can just write that check and all of a sudden start running better, as maybe another team has done uh, with some cash that was in the news this week, if you're not familiar, just go ahead and look up the Joe Gibbs Racing Engineer scandal that's been happening or watch my video from uh, yesterday or even the day before. But yeah, it's got to be tempting to be like, dude, we could just write this check and help solve some of our problems. Not all of them, but some of them. They could be running at least, you know, where 2311 is, um, or at the very worst, like the upper half of the midfield towards like contending for top tens every week. Yeah, they probably need to do something starting soon. But they are making moves. They are making changes. They're hiring good people. You think eventually that the success should start to come. Before we get to the next topic, I have some exciting news. Break Hard is on a diecast. If you missed it, Eric Estep and Out of the Groove are hosting the Groovy Hollow 4, which is a charity iRacing event uh, to help benefit Extra Life as well as Toys for Tots. And this car was originally supposed to run on track with JD Motorsports at Homestead in a few weeks. Obviously, that's not going to happen with JD's financial struggles. So instead, they pivoted to hosting this online event. And Break Hard is on the car that will be in the iRacing event. And it is all also on the die cast that has been manufactured for this. So head over to Daily Downforce today. Check it out. I'll put the link in the bio as well. All right, it is time for the weekly NASCAR Cup Series tier list. Who has the best chances of making it to Phoenix in a few weeks? Starting off at the top with numero uno, it is Kyle Larson. Six wins this season, two wins in the playoffs so far. Absolutely dominating wins in the playoffs. Now we're heading into the round of eight at three racetracks that set up incredibly, incredibly well for him. Yeah, Kyle Larson currently sitting at the top of the tier list. In the legit contenders category, we have Christopher Bell and William Byron again. The uh, round of eight stacks up very well for both of those drivers, um, too. They have wins. Uh, Christopher Bell has wins at both Homestead and Martinsville. And Willie Byron has wins at all three of those racetracks. He has wins at Las Vegas, at Homestead, and at Martinsville. They are legit contenders. In the could be a contender, but is Denny Hamlin category, we have... Denny Hamlin, because he could be a contender. He has the speed to be a contender. He is a contender for the championship. But remember, this is Denny Hamlin. This is the playoffs. The two of them don't ever seem to get along very well. In the dangerous category, we have Tyler Reddick. Dangerous not being like Daniel Hemrick thinks that he's dangerous. No, dangerous in the fact that like he can go out there and win Las Vegas. He can win Homestead. He could even win Martinsville. And if he gets to Phoenix, well, everybody, you know, could be in, in trouble. Tyler Reddick has all the speed. Tyler Reddick just needs to put a complete race together. That 40 or 2311 racing team and that 45 team just need to give him uh, exactly what he needs these next three weeks. But he is very dangerous, especially if he gets hot. In the frisky and dangerous category, we have Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney. They are dangerous. They are not frisky together. Uh, both of them are frisky in their own rights, but they both have a considerable amount of speed. 
Both of them do really well at the racetracks that we have coming up. I mean, heck, Ryan Blaney built a championship run off of uh, Martinsville, off of Martinsville when uh, just last season, Chase Elliott has won at Martinsville. Chase Elliott can win at Las Vegas. He could win at Homestead. If he finds just that little bit more speed, that nine team could be incredibly dangerous. Again, the only time I think probably both those guys have ever been uh, described as frisky. And then in the put him on a watch list category, we have Joey Logano because he's dangerous. He somehow, even when I said it's not over till it's over with him last week in the tier list, even when it was over, it still wasn't actually over because he still got into the playoffs after Alex Bowman got disqualified in post-race tech following the Roval. And now Joey Logano, I said to put him on a watch list because he is in fact very dangerous. His streak of making it to the final four in even number of years is still alive and he still has a solid chance of getting there. Um, is he does are the cards stacked against him yes he's going to have to perform really well at the racetracks coming up but i mean martinsville is there for his taking he's been good at las vegas in the past homestead i think would probably be his one where you're like i'm not sure how he's going to perform there He's dangerous. Keep an eye on him. So let me know in the comments what you think about Taylor Gray moving to the Xfinity Series, Travis Mack uh, leaving College Racing, likely headed to Legacy, and the tier list for this week. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.